Welcome to MB Productions. This is episode two of my training for Pack Tour. I'm going to go over the trip and give you an update on how the training is going and then also discuss things that I have purchased along the way. And so I have signed up for this transcontinental ride it's, uh, with this tour outfit called Pack Tour, and we're going to ride from Everett to New Hampshire. But the, what's unique about this trip is that it is fast. So we're doing a number of miles up to 145 miles a day. And those of you that tuned in before, you saw how I put together my training plan. My idea is to be able to ride 200 miles at the end of June. So this is the package that I put together for myself. And I've been sticking to it pretty good. I'm on week... 12, 11. I'm on week 11 of my journey and um, I do four days a week and um, Sunday's easy, Monday hills, Tuesday rest, Wednesday tempo, Thursday's rest, Friday's long and Saturday's a rest day. This is an example of the Monday route I did, uh, 92 miles of hills. What I found is that Sunday I'm supposed to do like an easy ride and then Monday to do this hill ride. So doing those rides back to back is a lot more challenging than I remember when I trained for this once before when I was 16 years ago. So this has been really good training doing um, the 61 miles in this case on Sunday and then turn around and do 92 miles of hills on uh, Monday. So as you can see, this is uh, a number of high climbs. I think we end up doing close to 5,800 feet by the time we're done. And this was the first time I did this kind of back to back with these kind of hills. And I'll tell you, Monday when I was done with this 92 miles, my legs were thrashed. And I, that's what you're supposed to be doing, I think, in order to get ready for a big effort like this. You know, you've got to put in the work and uh, that's what I've been doing so you know it was took me seven hours and ten minutes to do almost 5800 feet some things I've learned uh, throughout this training process uh, I've been riding bikes a long time and some of my stuff is good and I've had it forever and now it's time to upgrade and I've learned a few things over the course of the last few weeks and I've upgraded some things, so I'm going to go over the things I've done. I bought a new coat or jacket, bicycling jacket. Um, this is a Gore jacket, and it was a little over $200. And it's um, called a Gore Windstopper. And it's got sleeves that zip off, so you can make it a vest when it gets a little warmer. So. I found that throughout the course of my training, it's cold when we start and it starts to get warm throughout the day. This is a good jacket when you're starting out and it's in the 40s, where most of my rides lately have been starting in the 40s. So as the day warms up, I found that this jacket is uh, suitable for that. And it, it's pretty compact. Now I can't really take it off and carry it with me, but that's, uh, a new jacket that I bought. I bought a new light. This is a Bond Trager headlight that I bought and it's um, it's called the Elite. It's a little heavy but it really works all day. So I had one of these little lights like this that was lightweight and it was good for the front for maybe an hour and a half or two but now that I'm out there upwards of 10 hours I need something with a little more battery life and this Bond Ranger headlight you know it's nice and blinks and it's bright and it lasts all day. The other thing I found is I've got these tail lights these blinking tail lights and normally I would just use this one it's um, Axiom and I've had it for a while but it again doesn't last as long as I need it to. So I've got another uh, bike light, rear bike light on order, and I'll tell you about that in future videos once I get to try it out. But I've been using two. So this is a Pulse, and it lasts a couple hours too. So between the two of them, I get 
uh, a full day of uh, lights, but I don't want to take two lights. So I've, I've got uh, a new one on order and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I did order some new shorts. And so what I'm doing is as I get new stuff in, um, I throw out the old, this is the Velocio shorts and they're high end and, and I've been happy with those. And I also ordered some Gore, or excuse me, not Gore, but Louis Jarno. Um, these Louis Jarno shorts, I just bought them and they're probably my new favorite. I've been really happy with the way they feel. They got kind of a fabric feel. They don't feel like um, spandex so much. So these LG shorts have been really good. So I might order another pair of these. Again, when you're doing multiple days and that kind of stuff, you probably don't want to wear the same shorts every day. You want a different brand just because of the way it rubs. The other thing I've done is I've taken a seat off of my one of my other bikes and I left it on the seat post and I've got it measured the same and um, that's working out pretty good because I'll change seats, the, you know, pretty easy just to take the seat and the seat post right out of my bike and then put a different seat on it. And, you know, they're both high quality uh, saddles, but they do have a different feel. So, you know, that's been a struggle with not only my legs during training, but, you know, getting all of the parts that touch the bike uh, ready. And so sitting on the bike seat for as many hours as I've been sitting on it has been quite a struggle. I do been using the chamois butter and we've I've talked about this in the past. So part of the routine is, is before you go out on the ride, put chamois butter uh, all over inside your shorts. Then when you get back, take off the shorts as soon as you can and jump in the shower and shower with antibiotic, antibiotic soap, antiseptic soap and wash all of those areas that are um, sore. And then afterwards you can put on, uh, this is called Bactracin, I think is how you pronounce it, Bacitracin, or triple antibiotic um, ointment on the areas that are getting really sore. And then you'll find that, you know, you're gonna recover quite a bit faster when you do that. So one of the things I've kind of figured out is I've got a Garmin 935 and this 935 has the option to download courses. And I never took advantage of that before just because I just didn't really have a need to. But now uh, I'm creating a lot of new routes and that kind of thing. So it's nice to know where I'm going and I can go ahead and create the course in Garmin Connect and then download it to my watch and then it gives me directions. So I'm, during training, you get tired of writing the same things all the time. So B has been taking me out and dropping me off someplace away from town, you know, 100 miles and then I'm riding back. So that's been great to um, do that and I don't have to just kind of ride the same routes I've been riding all the time that can get kind of old. So anyway, that's uh, what I've been doing so far. Week 11 of the training is one of the toughest weeks because you, you've you been ramping up, you're building, you're building, you're building and so I've created this 145 mile route that I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And one of the th questions people ask is, well, like, what do you eat and drink along your way? So for me, I usually wear a Camelback or some kind of hydro pack, and I have water in that. And then I put two water bottles on the bike with non-hydration. I carry two Uncrustables, a package of peanut butter crackers, a Cliff Bar, and then I always pack two emergency gel packets. I don't intend to use them, but if I start to run out of gas or sometimes you run into some really bad headwinds and you're out there a, long, a lot longer than you expected, that's when I'll uh, dig into those gel packets. But that's kind of what I take for 
100 miles uh, for energy. Now I did run into a problem my first century is I bonked and I just didn't pack enough food and eat along the way. So one of the things I learned so far is to eat a lot more than you think you should and don't hesitate to stop at a store or anything like that and refill. Well, that's the end of episode two of my training. I had a lot more to say than I realized, so there's uh, I've learned a lot the past few weeks. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Leave a comment down below, and keep spinning. See you down the road.